the executive pastor here at Antioch, and it is so good to see you, and it's so good to be with family. Um, and I wanted to just tell you, for any of you that didn't know, Clarence and Alicia have been on a little five-week sabbatical, and we'll be stepping back in next week, so Clarence will be preaching next week, and so thankful for an elder team that sits back, looks at the annual calendar, and says, here's some healthy rhythms, here's some healthy pauses for you, Clarence and Alicia, so that you can tend to your heart in these seasons. And so I just say, as you step in next week, buckle up, uh, because uh, Clarence will be stepping back in ready to go and refresh. So it's always fun when that happens. Um, so I have the honor and privilege to be able to communicate or preach today, and uh, yeah, there we go. So, uh, and so as we as we step in this morning, I I just I just wanted to say we've been on this series called Love Your Neighbor over the last three weeks. I hope you guys have enjoyed that. Andrew Tiffany kicked us off in week one and just kind of identified who our neighbor is, and then Blake Slatten last week, uh, you know, connected us to how we can honor and serve and care for our neighbor. And today I want to hit on. Um, this idea that we love our neighbor by intentionally pursuing our neighbor. And as I was thinking about this morning, I uh, was continued to be reminded, I feel like the Lord just continued to remind me of my own salvation story. My salvation story to where I was desperate, I had no other option, and Jesus came and rescued me. And as I'm thinking about that salvation story, I'm thinking about this intentional pursuit of people. You know, intentional simply means just on purpose. So to intentionally pursue somebody, you actually have to understand the purpose and the intent in which you're going after them and you're loving them and you're engaging them. And when we think about our salvation stories, there's a, there's a sense of gratitude and thankfulness that arises in our hearts And out of that place, out of that place of I was desperate, I was lost, I was destined to eternity, to hell, and Jesus made a way where there was no way, I was rescued, and that salvation story, that testimony of Jesus in my life propels me to mission. It propels me to love my neighbor by intentionally engaging and pursuing my neighbor. So I want to lay a little foundation for us as we get going, and we're going to do something a little unique today. It might be a little different than just my standard monologue preaching today. Um, But I want to lay a foundation, and here's the foundation. Jesus is fishing for people. Jesus is fishing for people, and he is inviting us to go fishing with him. He's inviting us on mission with him. And we know that as Jesus lays a foundation of just who he is and how he pursues people. And he says it in Luke 19.10. He says, I came from heaven to earth to seek out and rescue those who were lost. He says to his disciples as he's recruiting them, he says, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Jesus is fishing for people. In Luke 15, Jesus, as he always does, teaches in a series of parables. And he begins to unpack these parables to communicate that he is after people. He's after their hearts. And in Luke 15, he unpacks these series of parables, and he starts with the lost sheep, the sheep that has wandered on its own. It's destined for death and destruction because it can't survive on its own. Jesus is fishing for people. The shepherd goes and rescues the one as he leaves the 99. Jesus is fishing for people. Tells the story of the lost coin. An individual is searching diligently. Where is this lost coin? It says, when you find your coin, when you find that thing that was lost but now is found, go to your neighbor, to your friend, and celebrate because what was once lost is now found. Jesus is fishing for people. And then the story of the prodigal son, the one that squandered their inheritance, ran away from their family, and finds themselves in this place of really death and hopelessness and destruction. And the return to the Father and the Father's embrace and restoration to the rightful place of where they belong. It's 
See, Jesus is searching for people. He's searching for people like he's searching for like the sheep and the coin and the children. And he's inviting us to go fishing for people with him. And we do that by intentionally pursuing our neighbor. Matthew 28, 18 says, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And we're not alone. Remember, Jesus is fishing for people, and he's invited us to go on mission with him. The last sentence in that is that I am with you. Jesus is going with us on mission. He's inviting us into mission because he's fishing for people. I wanted to lay that foundation for us today, and I want to build on that foundational truth that we are invited into mission with Jesus. I want to invite my friend Danny Brown up on stage. Yep. Come on, come on, come on. Danny. Danny is, uh, yeah, come on. Be careful, be careful. Danny and I have been connecting a little bit over the last couple months, and, um, and as we laid out this Love Your Neighbor series, both myself and Blake and Andrew Tiffany uh, really felt like the Lord was highlighting uh, Danny, and uh, mostly because our interactions with Danny uh, have just been really an overflow of just what God's doing out of his obedience. And uh, the reality is, is as I, I felt like the Lord was highlighting him because I'm watching Danny go fishing with Jesus. And God is showing up in the middle of Danny being on mission wherever he is. So we have this foundational truth that Jesus is fishing for people. When Danny and I got together this last two, maybe two weeks ago, we sat down and I just said, Danny, I just, I just want you to testify. And he's like, actually, I was thinking about Revelation 12, that we overcome by the power uh, the blood of the lamb and the power of our testimony. And we're, immediately we're on the same page of let's just stand up and testify of how good God is and what he does when we just say yes to him. And so this morning, Daniel and I are going to have a little dialogue, and I'm just going to kind of push us down the tracks as we interact with each other and um, do a little storytelling. So you ready? I am. There we go. You bet. You bet. So, Danny, I was just laying out just that idea that Jesus is fishing for people. So let us into your story a little bit of, of just maybe over the last year, how your yes to that invitation, kind of what that has maybe looked like, uh, and unpack that for us a little bit. Yeah, all right. So, uh, is that a good beginning? Uh, I'm used to being part of that big world. Are they in here? Can I just get them in now? Yeah, all right. They're going in.
determined when she starts defending him why she has to work with Dr. Beck. Like she's just gonna be, you know, like my husband left, she loves his kids, and almost getting like aggressive with, but I'm gonna get out of here. I, I'm out of here as soon as I can, and this is the day you interview me. And I'm, I'm expecting like, why do you work here? And so uh, I'm just listening, but right there I feel like the Lord just put something on my heart to pay attention and uh, to care. And then uh, like for the first time I If you got hemorrhoids, come see Danny. I'll take care of you. Oh, man, it's so good, so good. I, I, as I hear that story, and Danny's told that story, not the hemorrhoid story, but the Taco Bell story, but uh, the, the thing that I, I, I hear, Danny, as I'm hearing you say that is, is what I would just call the rhythm of a disciple, of listening and responding. Uh, what started as a joke uh, you had an ear that was sensitive to what God was saying and you were obedient to respond to it. And I'll just tell you that Jesus describes his people in uh, some specific ways and, and, and he speaks to this rhythm of a disciple of listening and responding. Uh, he describes even his family, who are my mothers and brothers and sisters, where there's the ones that do the will of my father. And then he says in Mark 7, he says, Jesus says that those who hear my words and put them into practice, they're like the wise man that, puts, that builds his house upon the rock. Hears my words and puts them into practice, listening and responding. Can you hear that rhythm of a disciple of listening, hearing, and then doing? And for Danny, it, it, wasn't, I'm sure for you and your family, the conversations you were having in your household were not easy conversations. Obedience isn't always easy. What God's asking us to obey isn't always necessarily easy, um, but it's right because he's called us to it. And if we're willing to listen and begin to respond, we'll begin to see the rhythm of a disciple, and we will begin to see the fruit as God comes alongside us and partners with us. I would encourage any of you, one, as you're listening today to testimonies or you're listening in conversations among yourself, be listening for that rhythm in people's lives. And I would even say, add this to your coffee and dinner conversations because every single disciple of Jesus needs to hear these two questions on a consistent basis. And they need to hear it because Jesus is describing, these are my people. They're the ones who hear and do, who listen and respond. And so a disciple needs to hear the question, how, what is God speaking to you right now? And how are you obeying it? And so, Danny, thanks for even just sharing and unpacking that. I know you're even just barely scratching the surface of the testimonies of things that happened at Taco Bell while you were there. And I wish we had time, a couple hours, to just unpack all the things of, of just in the middle of your obedience. And, and it's funny, in our obedience, the thing, as Danny unpacks it, is the incredible work that God's doing in you. It's funny that God does more work in us than our obedience than actually the thing that he's asking us to, to obey itself, you know. And so it's a powerful, powerful thing. So obviously you're not working at Taco Bell now. Uh, but um, you, you guys just went in the, in the fall, went through the church planning school. Last week, we sent these guys off to Southeast Asia. They'll be heading that way sometime this fall. So one, they need money. They need prayer. Jump on their team. I don't know any other way to say it, but connect with them afterwards and, and, and give them whatever you got. You just empty your pockets for them. So I said it. You didn't have to say it. You didn't even ask me to say that. So anyway, connect with these guys. You want to be on their team. But 
in the middle of that, part of that church planning uh, school was uh, you guys have visa things that you have to work through. And so as you're in a process of figuring out how we can get a visa into the country, you're beginning to say, what do I do? Is there a trade or a skill? So I'm, I'm giving you a head start here to say barber school was something that came up in the middle of that. And you found yourself at Paul Mitchell in barber school. That's a whole other story in itself of how he got there. But honestly, how he got there, guess what? God dangled the bait, he listened, and he began to respond. And so God has put you into Paul Mitchell. That's where you are now. So pick up there of where you are and what going fishing, going on mission with Jesus looks like in your workplace. Yeah, all right. Yeah, so Paul Mitchell.
Jesus called me. Um, and I said, you know, you're, you're, we're called to be light in the dark places. But it's a tough place. And then I said, if you get there an hour early, right before anybody else gets there, I said, oh, man, I'll run. And like prayer walkers does. And I've seen prayer walkers and Kevin Scott and Zach Miller and man, Victor and Joel and prayer walkers. So I've got to see it done. And I've done it. And I'm like, man, what if we, what if we just went into all these spaces, especially that one where it was her time. Yeah, we're, we really are just getting the highlight reel of, of some of the things. Of I, I would love for you to, to unpack even just some more testimonies. But, um, but God really opened that. And you've been there for a year now. Yeah. So, uh, and, and Danny, as I'm listening to you talk, the thing that I hear more than anything else is as you step in on a daily basis, you're just intentionally bringing the kingdom. Even your mentality as you stepped into that place and weren't seeing fruit, as, as people are sitting in your chair, you're like, got you you ain't going anywhere and we're going to talk about Jesus and you know you you may not know this but studies done over time uh, in the church is that 80 to 90 percent of people come to Jesus through a relative or a close trusted relationship so for Danny I'm looking at this a lot of times when we think of going on mission with Jesus we think about maybe street evangelism or just walking up somebody and saying boom got it okay see ya you fixed. You got it. And actually, uh, uh, you know, e- evangelism is actually this long thing where we're building these trusted relationships and invite people into our world where they actually get to see Jesus in our lives. And so this didn't happen overnight. There was a trusted relationship that's being built over time. And even Danny was just telling me, like, you got people crying because he's leaving. I mean, when you, when, if Danny was here to articulate the culture when he stepped in versus the culture that is present now at Paul Mitchell. It's a dramatic difference. Simply, it's amazing what the joy of God brings and amazing what intentionality of bringing the kingdom with you can do and to shift. And so it feels like we're highlighting, Danny, we're actually just highlighting a work and a yes from a disciple. And it's really, really powerful. Um, you know, I, I, I was looking even just a passage in John 4. I imagine Jesus sitting with his disciples, and he's saying to his disciples, all these people are walking around uh, around the disciples. They might be sharing a meal or talking. I just am picturing Jesus just even stopping and saying, open your eyes. The fields are white and ready to be harvested. And we have to have eyes. I mean, Jesus is with his closest disciples, Right? He's saying this to his disciples who should have an understanding of this. And he's saying, no, 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 you're looking, you're just seeing people walking around. I'm actually seeing the harvest. You need to see what I'm seeing. And, and so, Danny, even as I'm, I'm thinking about that, when you walk in, you're seeing this harvest field. So, um, uh, and, and, and let me just recap where we are on this today's, this idea today of that we can love our neighbor by intentionally pursuing our neighbor. It begins with our own salvation story that we were destined for death and Jesus came and saved us. And out of that place, out of that place of need that we had that only Jesus could meet, we are invited to go on mission with Jesus. It propels us to mission with Jesus. And as we just listen to the rhythm of a disciple, a disciple hears what God is asking. He hears the truth, and then he begins to respond to it and begins to go on mission because that's what God has called him or her to go on. And then we have to see the people around us. We have to see our neighbor the way that Jesus sees our neighbor. And it's the harvest. It's the harvest. So 
Uh, Danny and I were meeting just this past Wednesday, and yes, there's these places that we spend 98% of our time in the weekly rhythm of our life. And then there's these places where unexpectedly, God just begins to show up even when we might not be prepared. And Danny and I are meeting this last Wednesday, and I just call this the Panera story. Um, but we're meeting this last Wednesday, and Danny's like, you won't believe what happened. I'm like, well, just go ahead and tell me. So I'm not even going to butcher the story, set it up anymore. I'll just let Danny tell it, and then we'll come up on the back end, and, and it's just more evidence of what God does in the middle of our yes. So.
man, so good. And so you guys are continuing this relationship. So, I mean, even right now, let's just pray for, for him. Uh, tell, what was his name? Tyler. Tyler. So, Father, we thank you, God, that you are in pursuit of Tyler. And, God, we just invite you right now. Would he have just a sense of your love for him, God? And, uh, and we just pray for this relationship, God, We have for opportunities. We ask for Tyler's heart to be soft and ready to receive the good news. Um, and so, God, we just we pray for him right now. Wherever he is, God, would you meet him? Would you touch him? Would you bless him? Would you draw him close to you? And uh, we just say, we just tr- entrust Tyler to you, God. Amen. Man, isn't that good? So good. Um, and I, I, honestly, Danny, I hear that story, and I'm like, that is not how I would have responded. I would have been like, let's do call the cops. I think that would be a good idea. Or I, w- I don't know that I would have got up and run after. I'm like, I'm trying to put myself in those shoes to say, how would I have responded? And in the middle of it, I go back to that verse, open your eyes. And if our eyes are actually open to see people, then we're sensitive to, to, to invite them to the dinner table, to invite them to a cup of coffee or a meal and begin to intentionally pursue our new neighbor. And I just can't think of how many times that my eyes are closed and I'm not seeing the harvest and I'm not ready for the impromptu moment. So we've, we've kind of laid out these different windows of just obedience and, and even in the workplace that there's this long intentional engagement that takes place wherever God has planted our feet. And then there's the spontaneous moments if we have eyes to see the harvest that God just shows up. And even thinking about your story of at the first, you're kind of annoyed, you're in this busy work type deal. How many of us can relate to that? And all of a sudden, it's almost like God's like, no, let me get your attention. Let me take your mode of transportation and get your attention real quick. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, you're a good, yeah. You're a good friend, man. You got to protect his, his gear. So, um, so it's, it's so, so good. I, I think that uh, for us, what does that mean for us, you know, in our spaces? How do we walk away and say, and, and I, I'm not, we're not sharing testimonies here for comparison. We're actually sharing testimonies for the one reason that you do it, to testify of God's goodness in the middle of our faithfulness to be obedient. And when we choose to begin to live like a disciple in that rhythm of listening and responding, God is in partnership with us and he begins to show up and we begin to testify of his goodness in in the middle of our obedience. And so how do we obey? That's the question, right? It's obvious what the truth is. God's fishing for people. He's invited us to do it. How do we obey in the middle of it? I struggled with this. I went to a church uh, called uh, Norman Community Church, and an incredible mentor named Ken Primos laid out mission for me in such a, 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 a very basic way. And I thought it was really helpful. I sat down and did an exercise with him, and he said, hey, just imagine yourself. So as I'm telling this, I want you to participate in this exercise. He said, just imagine yourself and imagine the rhythm of your life, right? That you wake up in the morning. What are the places that you frequent? Think about you might go to the gym or you might have a coffee shop that you go to on a daily basis. Or obviously you go to work or your kids' activities or the school that they go to or their sporting events. And all the different spaces and places that you frequent consistently. And right now you guys already are thinking of these places, right? And begin to picture the people that are in those places. Some of them, you might know their name. Some of them, you don't even know their name, but you know their face. If you saw them somewhere, you would be able to recognize their face. Oh, that's that person from the coffee shop, or that's that person from the gym. You've never had anything beyond a surface conversation with these individuals. These are your neighbors. You just put a name and a face to your neighbors. And God is going fishing, and he's inviting you to intentionally pursue your neighbor. And the minute that this happened, I had this picture of a barista at this coffee shop. They made the best vanilla lattes, and I was addicted to them, and I would go three mornings a week. Coffee was free at home, and I was willing to pay for it because it was good. 
And I went into this coffee shop, and I had this picture of this girl's face. And I didn't know her name. I always paid, and I stepped back, and I checked, you know, the, the news or email or whatever else, text messages. I called my name, and I got my coffee, and I left. That was the interaction I had in this space that I went to three days a week. And so I said, okay, great. Here's what I'm going to do. This week, I am going to make sure I know her name. And I'm going to ask some questions about her world. And so I order my coffee. And I say, hey, I'm so, so sorry. I, I've been doing this for like six months now. <laughs> this is embarrassing. Can you just remind me of what your name is? And she tells me her name. And I'm like, I, how long have you been working here? And okay, you're a student. Great. What are you doing? What's that degree look like? And how do you, uh, how often do you work here? And do you, what do you do there? And I begin to tear down this barrier that I had created of me and you and I begin to just offer my world and let her offer her world and now I see this girl she actually went and worked for my mother-in-law and so you never know the seeds that are planted in relationship that will lead down the road to this opportunity to present the good news of the gospel. If, if it's true that 80 to 90 percent of people come to Jesus through a relative or a close relationship, then it means that you need to be really good at making friends. You need to be really good at intentionally pursuing your neighbor because that's actually where salvation lies. And so can, can, you, can you picture, and I would just make, here's, here's my encouragement to you. We're running out of time, so I'll just kind of land, land, uh, I'm not going to say it. People are annoyed when you say that. So. I know, it happens now. Ah, I fell into the trap. Uh, but I, 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 you, you yourself are already picturing some faces. There's no way you can do that exercise and not see the people of your neighbor, to see your neighbor. So here's the thing. Write down five or six of them and begin to pray into those people. And all you have to do is say coffee shop barista. You don't have to know their name yet, but when you do fill in the name and begin to intentionally engage. And guess what you do after you intentionally engage, you break down that wall, you say, Hey, we're going to this thing. Or Hey, why don't you come over and meet my family and come to dinner with us? Hey, do you want to sit? I'm having, a, I'm going to stay here and have a cup of coffee. When's your break? Do you have, there are endless opportunities to invite people into your world and begin to be on mission with Jesus. So there's something you can do when you wake up Monday morning and begin to intentionally pursue your neighbor. We can love our neighbor by intentionally pursuing them. And let's be a church that does that. So why don't you stand to your feet? I, I want Danny to, to just pray for us as we jump into this, uh, jump into mission this week. That's what we're doing. We're jumping into mission because the invitation is great. And so, Danny, would you just pray just a, a measure of boldness over us and, and a, 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 an ability to, to see the harvest like Jesus sees the harvest?